a step in the right direction. A very generic saying, isn't it? Madden games would release and we would get this notion from game journalists who probably never even watched a football game before. Year after year, game after game, microtransaction after microtransaction, bug after bug. The saying just doesn't mean anything anymore, especially when the community holds the exact opposite opinion. EA's reputation took a big hit too. What was once a company that supplied some of the best sports games ever made is just the husk of its former self. I can't imagine any dimension where an EA sports product is universally beloved. Guess what? We're in that dimension. Play college ball, you know. That's a cushy Ivy League school. <laughs> University of Texas. A decade of EA's college football series being on the shelf has built up some goodwill and believe it or not, this game had hype going into it and it's currently beloved. I cannot emphasize how uncanny that is. An EA sports release being met with positivity is like if Roger Goodell came out on draft night and everyone gave him a standing ovation. You want to talk about bizarro world? But is college football 25 just hype from people who are just desperate for a college football game? Or is it actually good? Well, when it comes to presentation, this game hits a complete home run or a touchdown, I, I guess, because you know, it's football. The sights and sounds are fully captured. Cheerleaders, mascots, fans, traditions, all represented pretty well. Doing this actually gives a different vibe than what you see in Madden. Scoring a touchdown in Madden would just result in some goofy dance than the next play. But here you can watch Sparty do his thing. He's my favorite cover athlete of all time. Playing with different teams in different home stadiums show different things. Honestly, I just spent some time picking different teams just to see what the game will come up with next. And it looks pretty good for the most part. The big schools have this grand feeling to them, but they also get the small schools right too by having minimal spectacle and having many empty seats. It's looking like the premiere of Madam Web out here, but we can go over this all day. But let's talk gameplay. Hey, that rhymed. The big question is, is College Football 25 a shameless Madden reskin? Or is it an entirely new game? The answer, like most things in life, lies somewhere in the middle. I know I sound like a fence-sitting piece of shit, but just hear me out. The first thing you immediately notice is how fast this game is. It's like when you played Marvel vs. Capcom and you selected the turbo mode because these dudes are sonic boosting through. And this is a welcome change from Madden as it felt like you were trudging through mud a lot of the time. This fits the very fast paced, option heavy, over under 56 vibes that college football naturally brings. Moving with the ball carrier is super satisfying and I can see why highlight clips are taking off when it comes to this game because these are fun to look at and fun to do. There's also this wear and tear system. You have to be a little responsible with your players taking damage, especially in Road to Glory and Dynasty mode. There's a new kicking system, and you will kick everything seven miles away from the upright at first. But I like it. If you reach the red part of the arrow, you sacrifice accuracy for power, which is how it should work. Job done. They've already made a couple here today. Between the uprights, it's good. Each team plays differently. I played against one program that exclusively ran the ball and another one that kept doing no huddle like a scrub online player. Playing with powerhouse teams against lower level schools feels like it should. It's like that one episode of King of Queens when Doug is just stiff arming all the four year olds. But in big games against big teams in big stadiums, it feels like a whole new ball game. The presentation and the gameplay do a Dragon Ball Z-esque fusion to create a solid gameplay experience. This game actually does some little things well too. I don't see anyone talking about the ball physics. Pause. The football realistically bounces and hits off objects. I also like how in this very fumble, the ball is actually knocked out of the QB's hands instead of the QB getting hit and the ball just plopping out. The trajectory of throws is way more realistic than it ever was in Madden as well. Pulling off crazy plays is something that activates the feel good center in the small part of my small brain. Use the play fake, now to throw. Makes a connection. He's into the open down the middle. Touchdown Jaguars. Now, this game is not perfect. Far, far from it. Let's talk. The discourse surrounding this game is that this is nothing like Madden at all. It's a completely different game. 
and I just have to look at these people side-eyed. These people either have not played Madden in years or are just being disingenuous. While this game makes really good changes, at the end of the day, it's a Frostbite Engine EA Sports football game. The very first thing you will see when playing this game is a kickoff animation that's been in Madden since George W. Bush was Matrix dodging shoes. A completely different game, huh? Fucking liar! There's something I like to call Madden-isms. When something happens in Madden and it's like, huh, that's bullshit. Or huh, that's dumb. That's a Maddenism. This game is full of them. The very first thing I've ever done was this mini game where you have to hit targets. I threw the ball once and the QB moves around like he took a dookie in his diaper. You can make me do the duck walk. And look, what even happened here? When this guy gets the ball in his hands, he is so dangerous. And here's a fumble way behind the line. And they are fortunate to get... Why does pitching the ball look so weird? Why is he cradling an invisible ball while holding the real ball like it's glued to his other hand? There's just so much stuff like this. Like roughing the kicker is called for almost half of the time. I don't even know how this is a thing. It, it literally cost me the Music City Bowl. I know rubbing your armpits on a kicker's leg is gross, but I don't really think that's roughing. Sure, I could just turn roughing the kicker off, but to quote the great angry video game nerd, Why do I gotta do that? The biggest thing is how the AI behaves. You'll catch dudes doing odd shit like stopping coverage for no reason, receivers jogging down the field instead of blocking. Why did this dude make a break to the ball only to not make a play on it? My player had every opportunity to send this quarterback to an early retirement, but he just stops and lets him run by for a touchdown. Even the CPU is a victim of this sometimes. I'm not asking for the AI to be omnipotent and make every play, but I at least want them to be somewhat competent. Look at this dude just standing around, not doing anything, not blocking anyone. Look at this dude actively watch a pass rusher run by and sack me. Those two things I just mentioned happened on the exact same play. This is number one bullshit. It's one thing if the offensive line gets beat, but this? Defensive players do a horrible job at cutting angles. They seem to try and follow the ball carrier as opposed to, you know, taking an angle. I just don't understand how stuff like this even happens. I don't care what difficulty I'm playing on or what awareness ratings these players have. Unless the rating is negative 99 and the difficulty is 42 chromosome, this type of stuff shouldn't happen. Unfortunately, it feels like a dice roll at times. Will my O-line block? Will my defense make easy tackles? Will someone rough the kicker? While college football does some great work, the gameplay is still haunted by its origins, and its origins are, whether you want to admit it or not, Madden. But whatever shortcomings the game may have on gameplay, the game modes are pretty damn good. Road to Glory puts you in a position as a college athlete. As soon as you start, I immediately love the fact that the game gives you a choice of picking what type of player you are. Are you a one star underdog or a five star prospect or somewhere in between? My biggest gripes with career modes in sports games is the fact that you are never given a choice of this. I also love that they don't have these cornball ass cinematics like they do in other EA sports games. You pick what team you want based on interest and starting position. I picked the South Alabama Jaguars. Who? A one-star school that guarantees me a starting job. Throughout the course of your journey, you have responsibilities. The biggest one is GPA. You have to maintain a 2.0 GPA while also trying to balance your training, your leadership, your brand, and your health. It's like college simulator minus the drugs and crippling debt. Like a great man once said, we ain't come here to play school. Screw learning. You'll get these text messages that alter your status. You can study more or you can be offered to party past your curfew, but someone snitches on you. Also, why yes with three S's? Or you can be on some Kevin Durant type shit and make a burner account. Damn, this is turning into touch grass simulator. This system works pretty well, and you definitely have to manage these attributes if you pick the underdog prospect. When you pick the big prospect, you can study freely because you already have decent player ratings. But starting as an underdog, you'll be playing bench simulator if you don't sacrifice some studying to get better at football. Once again, I love that you have that choice. Not every player starts off the same in real life. Some players are naturally better than others. The only thing I don't really like about this is that I wish you were a little bit more involved. Like, for instance, 
Look, I'm gonna study. There, I just studied. I just pressed the button and this piss meter went up. I think you need something a little bit more than just pressing X to study or pressing X to grow leadership or pressing X to build your brand. Oh, I'm out of electric bolts. I'll do the same thing next week. As far as the gameplay goes, you can pick between some positions. I guess they're racist towards kickers and linemen because I don't know why you can't pick them. And playing the game is just like playing a regular game just tied to one position. The one critique I have is the fact that you can't select plays. Now I understand you're just a player, but being limited to one play is pretty annoying. You can earn these things that give you the ability to select more plays, but it's only two more plays and sometimes it's just silly. Hey, you don't want to run touch pass? Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Two more touch passes. Great. Road to Glory is fun overall, and I can see myself doing multiple runs of this at the same time. Dynasty is back, and it's my favorite mode without a doubt. Selecting your team is essentially a difficulty choice. One star programs will lead you to struggling to recruit anyone while everyone will be attracted to your program if you have a five star one. This whole thing is built on recruiting. You have to try and lure in these young kids. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Let me stop that sentence right there. Sounds like I'm throwing candy into vans. You have to attract players to your program and the game does this by giving you certain amount of hours and you use these hours on a multitude of things. Firstly, you have to scout. Scouting is important because you can find rare gems even if they're lowly rated. Now you can use hours to learn about the player and bring their interest level up. The more hours you put into the player, the more you'll learn what they prioritize. If they prioritize things you specialize in, then you can attempt to sell them the idea of joining your program. If you don't have all the knowledge of what they prioritize and you try to sell them anyway, you could get it wrong. What happens if you specialize in nothing? You're fucked. <laughs> All this is going on while you're targeting other prospects, looking into the transfer portal and trying to stay in the lead for your top prospects. As a coach, you can upgrade your coach with this Ubisoft skill tree. Oh yeah, you can go play games. I kind of forgot about that. Your leaders not only have to lead the football team, but they got to step up and make plays on the field, keep everybody calm. These guys typically do a really good job. Oh, look out on the right, inside the 30. He's at the 10 and he glides into the end zone easily. I'm not gonna lie, I've just been recruiting. It is the best part of this game. The only problem I really have with Dynasty is the lack of customization. Now, apparently there's some legal shit about this, but you can't edit any player in this game. Not talking about just the real ones, the fake ones too. You can't even create a player. This is something that's been in sports games for like two decades. What's going on? But Dynasty is great, and I look forward to rebuilding a one-star school eventually. As far as Ultimate Team, I don't even have the B-roll of the menu to show you. Online gameplay works, at least from what I played, so yeah, there's that. College football's return is a success, which is just really shocking. An EA Sports game being this well-received is still shocking. But this game is still flawed and needs work. The game has a very, very rabid fan base behind it that swears up and down that this is a completely different game than Madden. But we went over that it's really not that much different from gameplay elements to even UI being recycled. But the main thing is college football is a good football game by EA Sports. Looks like hell froze over.